I'm sure by now you're getting really frustrated by the East Bay's pricing model. Homes are priced 20, 30, sometimes 50% below what they're actually gonna sell for. Well, if that's you, I'm gonna break this down so you can better understand it, and I'm gonna start right now. Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International coming to you with another video. Uh, this time I'm gonna talk about the East Bay pricing strategy. Really frustrating, kind of a Rubik's Cube for most people to figure out and definitely not straightforward. So I'm gonna start talking about the strategy uh, that we have seen why people are pricing their properties 20, 30, and sometimes 50% below what they're actually gonna sell for, why that has worked, and then where we've gone uh, into this new COVID era, because COVID has seriously changed the game relative to the marketing and pricing of homes. And if you wanna take, uh, after this video, your education to a, just another level, I've put together a COVID era buyer's guide uh, linked up down in the show notes there. Um, so you can do it, just download that um, and just get some more tips and tricks that I tell all of my clients uh, when they're starting their buying process. And I'm sure you will get something out of that. So go check that out. And if you get value out of the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because I am gonna continue to put weekly content out just like this. So without any further ado, let's talk about the East Bay pricing strategy. So here it is. The pricing you see on a listing on a piece of real estate that's on Zillow, on Redfin, on your Realtors app, whatever it is, uh, think of that as part of the seller's marketing strategy as opposed to a real driver or indicator of the ultimate value. Uh, historically, people have listed somewhere between 20, 30, and sometimes 50% below what it's actually gonna sell for, for one reason and one reason only, to attract you, the buyer, someone to come in and write them an offer, come into the open house, order a disclosure packet, and then add to the statistics, add to the energy, and then add to the competition. What a real estate agent who's selling a house with that strategy wants to do is attract 10, 20 offers so that they can tell the real players, the real people at the top, hey, we've got 20 offers, um, you're in the top three, and uh, you know what's your best price? It really just brings this bottom pressure up, not to mention it brings in a ton of people into open houses when we were allowed to do open houses. Um, and then there's a scarcity mindset and it drives emotion and people want what other people want. So. All right, so let me give you an example really quick. Uh, the Montclair special is this to a T. Uh, for anyone who's ever bought or sold in Montclair in the last 10 years, you'll know what I'm talking about when you listen. Uh, so anything that sells or is probably going to sell somewhere between 1.35 and $1.4 million will often have a listing price of 995,000. Why is that? Well, that is a, a, a neighborhood that traditionally has attracted a lot of younger folks, younger first time home buyers uh, who are moving out of San Francisco into the hills. Generally they're tech friendly, they're family oriented, and they're shopping on their phones. So they set a price range up to a million dollars and then something for three bed, two bath, or four bed, two bath, with you know 2,200 square feet and a nice little view, pops up for a million dollars. That seems like an awesome deal. We gotta go check it out. They would show up to the open house again when we used to be able to do open houses um, and then see that there's like a hundred other people there. And again, other people want what they want. They'll go read the disclosures, they'll fall in love with it, and then they'll realize they have to compete. And that's what will drive the price up to where it actually belongs. Um, and then maybe even above that further. That's the psychology that happens over and over and over again uh, when you, uh, employ this strategy well. And that's what basically happened in the entire East Bay is some agents started doing it and then sort of this brinkmanship, gamesmanship thing came in and pretty soon everyone had to do it. In fact, our team had an example in Montclair in 2016 where um, the seller didn't like that strategy, was really resistant to it, and uh, decided to go on at uh, 1.9, or excuse me, 1.19, so just under 1.2, because they felt like their house was right in that 1.2 range, and, the, and it was. Um, however, they sat. Uh, everything else that was on at 9.95 looked like a way better deal. Everyone overlooked this one or didn't show up in the first place because it wasn't following up, finding its way into their searches, and uh, it just sat, and it sat, and it sat. 
they pulled it off the market, waited 30 days and put it back on at the lower teaser pricing and ultimately uh, it ended up selling just below 1.2. So it actually undersold what it should have um, because they didn't hit that strategy right. So that's the teaser strategy or the underpricing strategy in a nutshell. That's why it works and that's why everyone does it. Um, and if you don't do it, you often get overlooked and it's really frustrating for us as agents, both on the buy and the sell side, clients, everyone doesn't like it, but that's the culture we're in and it's really hard to buck that based on just one listing or one house. It has to be sort of a community effort here. You know, with COVID, uh, Obviously open houses were gone and the energy that we would try and drive into an open house uh, changed dramatically from a lot to absolutely nothing. And so now to get people to come out to the houses, there are other strategies that are more important and that's why the, the teaser pricing is no longer effective or no longer as effective um, as the presentation and the videos and the virtual walkthroughs and that sort of thing. So we are in the midst of a huge change here, um, but I am seeing as things start to open up and the rules start to relax, a move back towards that transparent pricing model. So keep an eye on that be aware of what's actually going on and uh, make sure you talk to your agent to to kind of read the tea leaves so to speak on the differences between the listing price and the sales price and and just to know what you should really expect to spend uh, given the neighborhood that you're focused on all right i hope that was valuable hopefully you got something out of that uh, if you did please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because i'm going to continue to put out weekly content like this and if you want to take your education for the east bay market in the covid era a bit further um, down in the description of the video i have put a link to my covid buyer's guide which tells you all the tips and tricks that i tell my clients that you're going to need to know in order to be successful in this new market. Uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and sign it off. I'm, I'm Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International, signing off for now. See you on the next one.